Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Leah Cassanda. I'm a planner with Whitman Rockhart and Associates, and we are helping out with the Kent County East West Truck Freight Route Study. Um, I'm here with a number of my colleagues, and we are still seeing some folks slowly join us here. So we're going to give it a minute or two uh, just to make sure everyone has an opportunity to join the call since we are just at three o'clock. Um, just a couple of logistics. Hopefully you all can hear me. If you cannot, you have the option of calling in via your phone. So if you are having issues with your computer speakers, feel free to dial in via phone. This phone number should have also been included with the invitation you received via your email once you registered for the workshop. Um, we cannot see you or hear you um, at all, so you will be muted whether you call in via phone or are using your computer speakers. Which brings up the question, how can you engage with us? Um, we will be running a couple of polls throughout the workshop this afternoon. But you are also able to reach out via the question box, which you should see on the right-hand side of your screen. And you are able to kind of type in and ask a question at any point in time during the presentation. So please, if you think of something, ask us. Um, and then at the end of the presentation, we will be leaving time for a question and an answer section, at which point we will go through all those questions received. We may be able to group them by similar questions and that sort of thing. So please send that over. Lastly, this presentation is going to be available at the Dover Kent MPO website. I'm going to drop the two links you see into the chat box so you have them live and able to link to. So nothing is at these links yet, but you will be able to view them afterwards. And if you have any colleagues who are interested in what we talk about today, um, there will be a live YouTube link in a day or two uh, featuring this presentation. And comments can be submitted anytime um, via the suggestion box on the NPO website. And please just remember to include the East-West Truck Study in the comment field of that. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to hand it over to Jim Galvin with the Kent MPO. Jim, if you'd like to turn your camera back on um, and introduce yourself and uh, the study. I thought I'd turn the camera on. Wait. There we go. Hey, Leah. There we go. Hello, now we have you. All right, thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming on. I'm Jim Galvin, Principal Planner with the Dover King County MPO. Um, we started this uh, study um, after a suggestion from Kent County and the Kent Economic Partnership um, to look at truck routes and how trucks can get in and out of Dover, especially to the east, to the to the west, um, specifically between Route One and Route Three Hundred One um, over in Maryland, um, and so. We stuck it in our in our uh, mix for that year and uh, uh, prioritized it, and it came out as a as a, a, a really needed study. So we uh, we bid it out, and uh, uh, according to the process that our former executive director had defined, and um, as it was, WRA was uh, our our partner with this, uh, and lucky and lucky for us. Um, the one thing with with uh, the the study is it, it's been dragging on a while. Uh, you, you know, it, this started back in uh, it was an FY uh, 2020 study started back in late 16 or late 19, but um, it, geez, it was just early 20 that things got really messy with the with the uh, with COVID 19. And so this got delayed quite a bit. And you know, um, part of the, the real part of the study that got delayed was the traffic counts, because the traffic counts went down below half of what they were pre-pandemic. -pan, pre um, I think I think the, the, the 
the, the lowest is around 46%. So um, we couldn't count trucks on the roads, which was, which was part of the study. You know, we, we had some other um, earlier studies um, that where we could tr count trucks, but not all of the, all of the uh, uh, potential routes or the potential legs of the routes uh, could be counted. So anyway, this has been this has been delayed a bit. Um, we're catching up now, and we hope to have this done by the end of the year. Um, please ask questions. Please let us know what you think and give comments. Um, and, and with that, I'm going to let uh, Adrian Ice from uh, WRA uh, talk here and let us know what's going on with the study. Thank you. All right, thank you, Jim. All right, so we can go to the next slide. And we're going to start right off with a poll question that Leah is going to run. And the question is, we want to know who our audience is today. So which of these best describes you? I'll give you about 10, 15 seconds to respond. We have a speedy group where 94% responded, which must be all but one, which <laughs> can't get much better than that. All right, 100%. All right, and let me share those results with you all. Hey, are you all able to see the poll results? It looks like 65% of our attendees today are municipal staff and 29% represent other interests. All right, thanks. So just uh, to tell you what we're going to cover today, um, we've completed an existing conditions report of all the uh, various studies to determine existing conditions on the study roadways and we completed an initial round of municipal interviews with uh, the cities and towns that are on the study routes um, so we'll talk about uh, what we heard there uh, just touch on the potential types of improvements that we see and then what are the next steps after we complete this presentation today Next. All right, so here's a map of the study routes. The study area is generally from the Maryland state line to Route 1, and the routes included in this study are routes 300, 11, and 14, which are shorter routes that just connect Route 8 and 300, and then Route 8, 14, and Route 42 just in the section east of 300. So the western portion of this study area is pretty agricultural and low density residential. So the land use becomes more suburban as you go east. This map also shows the towns and cities that these study routes pass through. The towns of Cheswold, Clayton, Hartley, Kenton, and Smyrna, and the cities of Dover, Harrington, and Milford. Well, a, ma a main goal of the study is to facilitate freight movement we're also looking for ways to minimize impacts of truck traffic in these towns. Next. And our next full question is, which of the study routes are you most interested in? Please just select one.
we are at about 88% of folks, so if no one else has any feedback, I'm going to close this momentarily. Okay. Okay. All right, well, thank you. So we can go to the next slide. Yeah, we see that three, Route 300 has about a third of the people attending interested, followed by Route 14 and Route 8. Are you able to see the slide, Adrian? No, I'm still looking at the poll. Okay. All right, so as I mentioned, we completed a report just on the existing conditions, and this concluded quite a bit of information, uh, physical roadway inventory, information on volumes and vehicle classification from counts that we conducted, uh, crash history. We have information on travel time reliability. And this, because of the pandemic and traffic being um, you know, not normal. We relied on DelDot. DelDot has a series of sensors and they can track uh, the travel time uh, on segments between sensors. And they just published this information as part of their uh, Kent County Transportation Operations Management Plan. So that gave us some pretty good information on the travel time reliability, which means if you set out how how long does it take in um, comparison to what you would expect it to take an average time how long does it you know how often is uh, that travel time reliable um, so we talked to the Del dot folks involved with commercial vehicle enforcement and weight limits um, got information on freight truck origins and destinations and then uh, the currently planned improvements. And there's actually quite a number of them that are already programmed. Going next. So for the physical inventory, we obtained DelDot's roadway inventory data, but we also went out to each route to verify existing conditions and take a lot of photos. So we collected data on all these things, the road widths and shoulders, speed limits, weight limits, and other truck restrictions. There are some roads where trucks are not permitted, um, traffic signals, school zones, and adjacent land use. So to get into the traffic volumes, um, we did conduct 24-hour tube counts over a one-week period. and. Um, Jim, this was actually in January of 2019. It was just before the pandemic. So we were lucky there. Um, we conducted counts at 16 locations to cover different segments of each of the routes. So these two counts can uh, collect the data on volume, speed, and vehicle classification. And we use this to get a sense of which routes carry the highest volumes and numbers of trucks. So this slide shows total average daily traffic on the three routes that basically traverse the entire study area east to west. Um, route 8 on the left in purple, Route 300 in the center in blue, and Route 14 on the right in green. In the first bar, on each chart is a count done near the Maryland state line. And then the second bar shows the count taken near US 13. 
Now root 14 on the right extends east of, of uh, root 13. So there's a third bar for a count near US 113. In each of these bars, the crosshatch portion is the truck volume. The scale is the same on all of these charts. So you can see the relative volumes and truck volumes. You can see that number one, root eight, carries the highest volume throughout. And number two, on all these routes, both volumes and truck volumes increase the further you go east. Right, next. All right, so this just shows the comparison um, of counts on all the different routes at like a cordon line. On the left, near the Maryland state line, we had data on Route 8, 300, Route 14, Route 11, and Route 44. So you can see these volumes are pretty low, Route 8 the highest, and it's less than 6,000 vehicles. And the rest of them are around 2,000 or less. Now the truck percentages are, are pretty high, like 22% trucks on Route 11, although the actual volume is relatively low. So then on the right, near US 13, you see how the volumes are like sometimes fourfold what they are at uh, the Maryland state line. The truck percentage is lower just because the total volume is so much higher, but still pretty substantial, especially on Route 300, where there's 15% trucks, and that's the, the highest volume of trucks. This is in the section north of Walmart, and that averages uh, almost 1,800 trucks per day. All right, so I mentioned that we did get uh, the vehicle class, and that was broken down really, you know, tractor trailers or single unit, um, two axle dual tire, and the blue represents like autos and pickup trucks. So these, um, the pie charts on the left show the vehicle class in the two highest volume segments. And at the top, that's Route 300, north of Walmart. At the bottom, that's Route 8, just west of Salisbury Road. So the yellow and orange portions, those are the trucks. The, uh, the darker orange is the two-axle dual-tire trucks, and the, uh, the yellow is tractor-trailers. So you see on Route 300, top left, 3% of all the traffic is tractor-trailers. And then on Route 8, um, a lesser percent of, of trucks, but still a high volume. The charts on the right show day of the week information. We counted um, you know, 24 hours, so we got information by day of the week. And we found that truck volumes and percent of total traffic, that is trucks, was significantly lower on Saturdays and Sundays. Right, next. So we got the information on the speed limit, again in the field and from uh, Del Dot records. So this shows, um, you can see the legend, the blue 50 miles an hour, and that is the speed limit on all of these routes when you are outside of a town, with one exception, and that is on Route 300 between Kenton and Smyrna, where the speed is 45 miles an hour. So you can see where the towns are, the speed limit gets reduced and generally in the downtowns is 25 miles an hour. Next. All right, so we also looked at weight limits and there's not a lot. There's one on Route 11, it's posted with a 25 ton weight limit just south of where it intersects Route 300. And then on the right, Route 300 has a weight limit just west of where it intersects with Route 11. So it might be the same creek, I'm not sure, but um, 
300, a limit of 18 tons for two axle trucks and 28 tons for three axle trucks. So we haven't heard from anybody any feedback that this is causing um, truck, truckers or freight carriers any difficulty, but that's the kind of thing that we want to hear from you. Is this something that affects your ability to move the freight that you want to move? Right, next. All right, we got a five-year crash history. Uh, from 2015 through 2019 from Delvat's crash records. I'm really looking for uh, specific locations of that, you know, that have a lot of truck crashes or specific crash types that involve trucks. Um, and what we found was on all of these routes, uh, truck involved crashes occur at a lower percent than they are a proportion of traffic volume. So we didn't see red flag flags there in the number of truck crashes. Now Route 8 and 300 have uh, you know a number of crashes. You have a lot of volume, so it's it's logical the higher volume routes have more total crashes. Okay, next slide. All right, again, I mentioned we're looking for patterns. And the one pattern that we did find that is related to physical road conditions is in the cities where the large trucks making right turns take out poles, signals, signs, whatever. And when they make a right turn in particular, they take out poles at the corner. The top photo shows uh, Dover. Route 8 in Dover. Crashes involving trucks, when we looked at the causation of the crash, um, mostly related to speeding, and that could be by the, the auto driver involved in the truck crash or driver inattention. And I would say in looking at the crash patterns that a lot of times it was the automobile driver rather than the truck driver. Um, there was one crash, and this was actually mentioned by the Hartley folks when we talked to them, because it was, must have been spectacular. Um, the bottom photo on a curve on Route 44 going west towards uh, the center of Hartley. This truck didn't make it. He jammed on his brakes and left the roadway and overturned. But it turned out, you know, when the police investigated it, uh, the driver was cited for speeding. So we were looking for patterns of concentrations of crashes. That's not something that we found in our crash analysis. Next slide. Another safety concern is the presence of slow moving agricultural vehicles on these roadways, particularly in the western portion. And a lot of times uh, they're wide and take up a travel lane. They can't fit in the shoulder, so they are taking up a travel lane. And they're slow moving. So these photos on the, uh, the left is on Route 14, and the right is on um, Route 300, south of Clayton, and that's actually uh, during the fall, like it's a harvest. So we looked for patterns. Um, yeah, how many crashes involved agricultural vehicles? And out of all the crashes, now we looked at there were only two that involved farm equipment, one on Route 8 and one on 42. So I know it is it's a fraught situation for the folks driving the equipment, you know, feel, you know, feeling safe. Um, on these routes, the volumes are very low, and there are opportunities to pass. But if you look on the photo on the right, um, it's a no passing zone. And you're on a curve, so you can't really see an oncoming vehicle. So if you're an aggressive driver and you want to pass this guy anyway, I mean that is, um, you know, an undesirable situation. But if you wait, there are plenty of opportunities to pass slow-moving vehicles. All right next. All right, so freight generators. This 
is a chart that shows and maps the concentrations of industry with the darker orange being the higher concentrations. And as you might expect, the highest existing concentrations are in Dover and Milford. Now looking at Milford, much of their industry is located in Southern Milford in Sussex County. And, and one of the issues that we heard was difficulty reaching um, you know, from Route 14, getting to that industrial area south of the Mispillion River. Um, although, I mean, our study area is Kent County, so any solutions we find need to be in, in uh, Kent County. Next. So we'll go to poll question number three. And here we're asking you the issues that you see that are important affecting freight movements on these routes. So please select just one. Okay, we'll give it about another 10 seconds before we close this poll. All right, so we have a mix. Interesting. All right, so congestion and travel time reliability um got no votes for being the uh the most important issue all right so inadequate room for truck turns safety and difficulty traveling between the main route and destination all got pretty equal response thank you There we go. All right, so I wanted to go over a little bit of what we heard from the towns that we talked to, um, what we took away from that interview. So on Route 300, uh, the towns of Clayton and Smyrna, up at the eastern end of that, gave us these comments. Number one, the biggest truck, generation, tr truck generator by far is Walmart. There's some issues created by trucks traveling to and from Walmart, and the towns would like Walmart's participation in trying to mitigate those issues. In Clayton, um, the public had complaints about trucks coming down Main Street, which is Route 6 in Clayton, and also using residential streets. So they have a big um, industrial truck generation, truck generation generator that is off of Route 300 and off Route 6. That's Metal Masters Eagle Group. Number third, uh, there are cable wires at some locations that are low hanging and trucks take them out and sometimes pull down the pole as well. We actually saw this in uh, some of the crash history. That's not something that necessarily we can deal with um, not sure, I mean, it's a utility issue, not sure how our study would address that. The intersection of Route 300 and School Lane, South Bassett Road, right at the railroad, is cited as a problem intersection. I know that intersection was being studied by Del Dot traffic. Um, but I think we will be looking at it as well for the issues now that we see the broader study that we are doing. 
And finally, uh, trucks are going down Commerce Street or Main Street in Smyrna instead of staying on Route 300. And this could be because the GPS devices are sending them that way. That's the shortest route uh, to get to Route 13, to get to the Route 1 interchange that they're looking for, and that's where they go. Next. So our fourth poll question I'm not seeing the poll, Leah. Hello, Leah? Yes. So it is, for some reason, not working. I apologize. But we can ask it generally for folks to provide an answer in the question box, which is, are truck routes adequately signed? And just a yes or no question, do you find that truck routes are adequately signed um, through your communities? And we will review the results of that feedback once we get to the Q&A portion. Okay. We okay to move on, Leah? Yes, it should be sharing. I apologize. There seems to be that, some. Uh... Yeah, I see the slide. All right, so okay, so great. We can move on. Yes, thank you. Everybody, please go ahead and uh, give your opinion on whether truck routes are adequately signed. Um, still in Clayton and Smyrna, uh, back to the Walmart distribution center. They apparently that their docks are very tightly scheduled and drivers are supposed to arrive at a specific time. And if they arrive early, they need to do something because they can't go into the dock. So they circulate or idle or park elsewhere. And right up the street is the Gateway North Shopping Center, which has posted no truck parking signs throughout its lot with $5,000 fines. So, I mean, that is a sign that truck parking Unauthorized truck parking was an issue there. Next. All right, so in Dover, uh, discussions with uh, the Dover folks, they mentioned several things. Um, one's related to the new post office location, uh, bottleneck at North Street, and physical constraints on the ability of large trucks to make turns. In fact, any of the downtown streets have difficulty with truck turns. So um, they should be limit, limited to local deliveries. Uh, the bike path east of Salisbury Road, which uh, narrowed the roadway, has created a bottleneck on Route 8. And just in general discussion, it was mentioned that the Route 8 corridor, it goes um, you know, through mixed use areas and if possible, through traffic on the Route 8 corridor, uh, would, it would be desired if it could be rerouted away from the downtown. And finally, um, a good connection is needed to the Garrison Oaks development, the industrial park from the west. Route 8 is the most direct route from the state line to Garrison Oaks. Next, in Harrington, they have a planned industrial park and intermodal terminal where trucks and um, the Marva Central Railroad could switch 
modes. And that site is located east of US 13. We mentioned Burroughs Logistics that generates a lot of truck traffic. They mentioned the intersection of Route 14 and US 13. That's a place where 13 northbound and southbound are, are they are separated with a like a 300 foot wide median in between. So there's two traffic signals on Route 14, and we got that central area. So left turns from Route 14 to US 13 can be can take up all the area um, in between and cause some congestion. And then finally, the usual story of trucks following their GPS to go through town instead of on the signed truck route. And on Route 14, there is a formally signed truck route, and it has been improved to facilitate truck movements on the truck route. Next. All right, in the small towns of Kenton and Hartley had some common concerns. Kenton is at the intersection of Route 300 and Route 42, and Hartley at the intersection of 11 and 44. So they don't have local industry or truck traffic generators in Hartley. The trucks are passing through. In Kenton, they mentioned a large volume of dump trucks to a specific location going through Kenton. And there's also a, uh, a new proposed industrial development on Route 42 west of Kenton. So that is a, a future traffic and truck traffic generator. At the signalized intersection of 342 in Kenton, large trucks have trouble making the turn from Route uh, 300 on to 42. The towns mentioned that trucks don't abide by speed limits and they don't have police to enforce it. Now I will say in our, our measurements, our, our counts did record speed and in general the average speeds were close to the posted speed limit but the problem often in the small towns is the you know the outliers, the few vehicles that do speed, and that they're the ones that cause the problems. Final comment in Kenton and Hartley involves truck noise, engine noise, and brake noise. All right next. So our final poll question. So because we have a lot of municipal representatives here, what are the truck, truck, uh, the truck impacts in your community? And you can select all that apply. Okay, give it about 10 more seconds. About 75% of you have voted. All right. And we're going to close this poll and sharing the results. So 63% mentioned traveling on streets they are not supposed to. And then closely followed by damage to the signs, poles from truck turns 
and noise. So, I mean, all the all of the things we've heard before, we are hearing again today from uh, the folks attending this webinar. All right, well, Jim mentioned it's the East-West Truck Study and at the Maryland State Line, but they're really, a lot of the, uh, the freight is trying to do is get to Route 301. A portion of that will go south on 301 and hook up with Route 50 and go to the, the Bay Bridge over towards uh, Annapolis and Baltimore. So Maryland is currently, well, actually, they're almost finished developing their freight plan update. They have developed an improvement plan. Uh, it does not include any highway improvements on the Eastern Shore. Um, the Maryland plan doesn't classify any of their east-west routes that extend into Kent County as freight corridors. Uh, the most encouraging thing is that Route 301, US 301 in Maryland, is classified as a critical rural freight corridor. So that makes it eligible for um, certain types of funding. So that the east-west roads in Maryland that connect 301 to our Kent County east-west routes should be the focus of coordination with Maryland. Right now, the state of Delaware is updating its freight plan. And, um, you know, we've been in touch with those folks and provided our input, and we're hoping then that that is a mechanism for coordinating with Maryland on um, possible future improvement to those Maryland east-west roads. All right, next. All right, so just wanted to summarize the outreach activities. And what we're trying to do is hear from the freight community, hear from the municipalities, what are the issues and the problems. I mean, we've done a lot of you know, counts and observations and analysis, but it is, it's, it's more productive and easier to pinpoint areas to concentrate on with the input of the folks that use the roads, and the folks that live there and observe this stuff all the time. So um, we did have a technical advisory committee meeting in 2020, did our municipal interviews in 2020. Um, we currently have been concentrating on outreach to the freight carriers that's underway. We have uh, composed a survey which we are hoping, I don't believe it's gone out yet, hoping to be distributed through the Delaware Motor Truck Association. We're doing this public workshop today and we're going to continue to accept comments until the middle of October, say October 15th. And Leah has provided the link to where you can provide comments, ideas, whatever your input is in that suggestion box, I think she Leah provided the link already or may provide it again. Um, just mention that this your comments in regard to the East West truck study. Next. All right, so what are the potential types of improvements? Based on what we've heard, um, an obvious one is better directional signing. Now I have to say that in our inventory, this is an example on Route 14 going east at Route 113. There is a sign that says truck 14, turn left to go north on US 13. You turn left and you see a sign truck Route 14. And then <laughs> there's nothing else. And so we can't uh, figure out what the intent was. And that's something we're going to have to work through with DelDot and Milford and uh, see if we can actually get a truck route and sign it. Uh, we have a similar issue in Clayton and Smyrna, where I, I can see um, directional signing improvements would be very helpful. All right, uh, bridge improvements to remove weight limits. Is that an important issue? Uh, that's certainly that's something that could be programmed and done. 
uh, possibly improvements to intersections or particular roadway segments. Um, I see that on Route 14, uh, west of 113, there's a huge cold storage facility and industrial, lots of driveways, and there's no turn lanes or anything. So I mean, that is a, a segment that I was looking at as uh, potential for some kind of improvements. Possibly new road connections, short connections to uh, ease truck movements, allow them to avoid areas where they shouldn't be. So we're looking at roadway improvements, physical improvements generally. There are other types of improvements that aren't the focus of this study, but you know, if we learn of them, we will include mention in the report so it's all in one place. Um, one of the things, GPS planning, a lot of the, the freight companies have their own algorithms. They send their drivers on particular routes. Others just use you know, Tom Tom or whatever they, they use. So GPS route planning is sometimes the culprit in where trucks, you know, trucks going where they're not supposed to be. And then truck parking. There is, was actually, uh, Lumapco completed a truck parking study and has identified areas actually within our study area uh, that could have a role um, and not, not our study, but we again, we wanna include that in the report and keep all those truck related recommendations together. Next. So next steps. We are using all of the public input to identify the purpose, you know, what are the needs and the purpose of improvements and identify a priority route or maybe more than one route. Identify improvements to those routes and vet them and then make recommendations for improvements. Now, as, as Jim mentioned, we've been delayed and we do want to get the study completed. So it's a fast schedule from here. Uh, we're doing our outreach through the middle of October to get input. And we are going uh, aiming to complete a draft report by mid-November and get reviews from all of the agencies and you know, wrap up the report end of this year. And then the MPO has its public advisory committee, technical advisory committee reviews. So um, the earliest that we would complete this with uh, the MPO Council is their meeting of March 1st, 2022. Right, next. All right, hey. so, go ahead, Leah. Yeah, with that, I'd like to ask all of our panelists to um, Please turn on their cameras. So we have a number of folks with us today, and you see some logos there at the end of the screen kind of representing our partners in this effort. So Kent County, um, Kent Economic Partnership, of course, Dover Kent MPO, you heard from Jim earlier, as well as uh, some of our colleagues from Bellbot. So thank you all panelists for being here today. Um, we have received a number of questions through the chat that I will uh, run through momentarily. Uh, for our attendees, those of you, a number of you have found the question box, but if not, again, on the right side of your screen, um, you will see an option there to key in a question. So I'm going to kind of hover on this Q&A screen now. So uh, one question we received, and Adrian, this is probably for you, um, from Suzanne, is what is meant by, meant by priority routes? And on our last screen for next steps, you, you indicated we're going to be identifying priority routes. Well, that was meant like if one of these routes rose to the top in terms of uh, importance for freight or issues and problems that could be addressed by physical improvements, um, that's really what was meant. I mean, there are, we have five or six routes um, and we want to have a good route to get from the state line or ideally route 301 in Maryland to route one. And is there one route that stands out as the you know, best route to improve, to facilitate freight? Uh, there may not be one, 
but that was one of the, you know, when the project was scoped, it was thought that maybe there would be uh, one route that would um, be the best to improve for east-west movements. Thank you. And I, I was thinking, perhaps, Linda, you could probably provide some interesting follow-up there. So you are regularly, day in and day out, working with local businesses, and that is kind of including freight and including industrial uses. Um, could you provide a little perspective on what you see as kind of the emerging needs in Kent County as it relates to freight travel? Well, and thanks, Leah, for um, letting me um, be part of this. And thank you to the MPO and WRA for all the good work. Um, the reason it actually started was the Rockport Analytics did a study for us on targeted industries and warehousing distribution and logistics was one of those targeted industries. And when we started to look at it, we were hearing about access to Route 1 and then east-west freight routes and uh, from companies that didn't want their drivers to have to go through municipalities at 25 miles an hour. And in, you know, if you're in logistics, every mile, every penny that you spend, it all adds up into, you know, your profit margin. So we heard that loud and clear. And that was one of the reasons, one of the main reasons that we asked the MPO to take a look at east-west freight routes. And we also realized that a lot of our products from over on this part were going to Baltimore or DC. And that there, you know, there are some nice scenic routes, but there wasn't anything that was really designated as truck, truck route, um, east, west, um, out of Kent County. So hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, thank you, Linda. And, you know, while we're on that track, uh, we have Sam here from Delta. And Sam, you work on freight statewide. Um, and I know Adrian did mention there's an update to the statewide freight plan underway as well. So are you able to provide a little bit of uh, feed in some of the gaps there? And not, not gaps, but a little bit more context to uh, the bigger picture of freight movements in the state and how the study fits into that? Yeah, so um, we are currently um, mapping out the different freight routes in the state and that will be more concrete here. Um, just next week um we have a follow-up meeting um so yeah we we are going to keep on um mapping those out excuse me thank thanks sam yeah so this is kind of part of the big picture of what's going on um statewide right now and this planning effort is making sure that we uh the, the kent county have the right inputs into that process too so we're very uh, I think it's a, a good thing for the county and the municipalities. Um, so thank you, Sam. A couple other questions here, some uh, more specific uh, questions. Back to the crash data we heard about. Um, there was a question about um, what intersection, Adrian, I, I'm putting you on the spot here. If you recollect um, on Route 14, do you know which intersection um, those crashes were recurring? And if not, uh, we can get that back uh, to the, the question asker once we have the time to look back at the crash reports. But um, you mentioned a specific crash in downtown, um, in the downtown area on Route 14. I forget which oh, town, of course. That was, wasn't 14. That was in Hartley on Route 44. Yes, thank one you. One that I talked about on the curves that where they left the roadway. Now, we, we did map crashes and truck involved crashes um and we do have a report that might uh i'm not sure if that's on the mpo website but all of that will all be involved in the final report as well it has a lot of detail on all of that thank you we have some general feedback um just about hartley that there's been a number of crashes at that intersection along with a couple of homes that have actually been uh, condemned due to accidents. So thank you for that feedback. Um, let's see, uh, a couple more here coming in. Thank you all. Um, was question for you, Adrian? Uh, did you speak with anyone from Cheswold uh, when you did municipality interviews? Yes, we did. 
And um, no issues stood out. I guess there is a, a concrete plant or, or uh, something like that. Maybe that the trucks are coming at odd hours that are uh, annoying to the residents. I don't know. Is uh, I think someone from Chessfold is on this call. Uh, yes. But that, that we do was, have someone. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, and they... Go ahead. Oh, they actually just added there's a situation um, in Chessfold um, whereby Route 42 is also their main street, which makes it difficult to kind of develop plans for really creating a main street environment, like a friendly down home main street walkable space when there's truck traffic as a constant. Um, is there anything going to be done to identify an alternate route for for trucks, and can, can, we also have a comment about that uh, for Hartley. You know, is there a way to kind of for trucks to bypass the downtown areas of some of these, um, especially historic small town main streets? Um, that can be a major lift. I mean, we certainly will look at that. Um, I can't say one way or the other whether we can identify a, uh, a route. You know, whether it's another existing street or a new roadway. I mean, that, that can be. Uh, that was not part of the scope of this study. Um, we, we wanted to find out what the primary routes were. If, if it determined that um, a bypass is needed for any particular town or section of roadway, uh, then um, that, would, that would require another study to look at and to uh, assess the uh, uh, or the value and the expense of, uh, of a truck bypass. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Um, let's see, another comment. Uh, the Smyrna rest area has truck parking that seems underutilized. Uh, is there any thought of directing early arrivals for Walmart toward that rest area? And I imagine. Um, Adrian, I'll start with you, and then Linda, I know you were very involved with a truck parking study that was recently completed. So Adrian, first, uh, any comments on the use of the Smyrna rest area for layover? Right, and I think the truck study that was mentioned, actually, um, that might have even been a recommendation, but it's certainly close and available, and would need communication signing, other ways to, and, and probably, you know, participation from the destination <laughs> uh, warehouse to to get that to happen. Yeah. Linda? Linda. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, uh, yes, uh, I was very involved in the truck parking study and Dave Hug from Dover was also from the municipality involved in that study. And one of the things that we found out, and actually they had a driver that was on part of the study, which was, fabulous and he talked about what happens in other parts of the country but what they found out one of the things they found out about Smyrna rest area is that it's not underutilized at certain times it is overutilized and there's not signage along route one in other parts of the country there are signs that say 12 spots left at this area the rest area coming up so that you you know, as a truck driver would know whether to pull in there or the whether to keep going. So there, out of that truck study, there's going to be some really good recommendations, but I would never say that Smyrna rest area is underutilized by the numbers that they showed in the truck study. Thank you, Linda. And we will be kind of cross-referencing the results of that study. Um, in our report, and you know, I know once we complete this kind of thing, it's in the hands of many of the folks on this panel uh, to implement. So it's great that we have such good collaboration uh, here in Delaware between all levels of government and uh, public-private partnerships as well. Um, Suzanne is sharing a fun anecdote uh, about a truck crash a couple of years ago that left jello all over the roadway. So I think we can all be thankful that doesn't happen on a more frequent basis. Um, let's see, um, have another comment that Route 44 really should be for local deliveries only. Well, we'll also with all these questions we're receiving and comments we'll be receiving through the website, 
Uh, we will be noting them and being sure to address them as appropriate through our report. Um, speaking of, someone is asking, how can I access this presentation and the truck crash data study? So there are two links in the chat right now. One is to, both are to the MPO website. One is to a comment form and the other one is to their presentations page. We will be updating that presentations page with a video recording of this session. Um, we will also post the PowerPoint and um, I think the existing conditions report, which includes some of that truck crash data will be available as well. So you can see the specific maps and really take your time um, looking at them. Uh, as uh, Well, again, we'll be collecting comments for another two weeks here until October 15th. Leah, is there any way on the MPO website we can get that truck parking study posted and maybe it already is out there? I'm not sure. Marilyn? Waiting for someone to, I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> like, I can it, answer that. It's not there right now. Um, Will Mapco. It's not there right now because we didn't do it right. It's on Will Mapco's, yeah. but I will get in touch with Will Mapco and see if we can get it put on our website. If not, it can be found on Will Mapco's website. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, it's useful to cross post these things. So we'll do that uh, as appropriate with permission, of course, from the uh, owner of the study. Um, okay, a uh, question. Uh, why is Carter Road in Smyrna off limits to trucks, which forces delivery uh, to the Wal to go through town to get to the Walmart from the east? So, don't know, Adrian, if you're familiar with Carter Road, but a kind of a question about truck routing in the vicinity of Smyrna. Well, I'm, I don't know the genesis of it, why it is, so, um, but that's something we can find out and, and look at that in particular. I'm sure it, you know, has something to do with impacts to some sense of you know, residential or other municipal use. But I will, thanks for that question and we'll follow up on that. Great. And uh, one of our attendees, thank you, just provided the link to the truck parking study from the Wilmapco site. For in, so in the meantime, feel free to go to uh, Wilmapco's website to see that truck parking study. Mm -hmm. It is finalized and available to the public. Thank you, Drew. Um, any other questions? That about um, has gotten us through our backlog of questions. Please, uh, we'll hang on here for a few moments. If anyone has any other, anything else for us and panelists, if anyone has any uh, parting thoughts or other points for consideration they'd like to leave with our attendees today. Yeah, Leah, if I may add to, um, just to verify, um, either tomorrow or Thursday or Friday, excuse me, we should have the um, this presentation available on Dell Dodd's YouTube channel. Thank you, Sam. Yes. So, like I said, we will be getting that up and available. Um, I will push that link out to all of you who are in attendance today, as well as those folks who received the invitation and were not able to join. Um, and we'll also do our best to push that out on other uh, social media channels and the like um, to get that spread far and wide, obviously. We want to collect feedback, not just from you, but also from anyone else who may have interest who was unable to join us this afternoon. So thank you, Sam. And anyone else? Okay, if not, I'd like to thank Adrian, for your great presentation, it was very informative, and thanks to all the partners in this study, um, MPO, Kent Economic Partnership, and Kent County, um, and DelDot, of course, for your great technical support along the way. You provided us with a lot of great information um, to support the study, and I'm sure we'll be great partners to work with in implementation moving forward. So thank you all. Um, I hope you have a great afternoon. I'm glad that we were able to only use one hour of it instead of two. And if you have any follow-up questions, uh, let's see here. I think we have one more slide for you. So a reminder to go to that um, suggestion box. Um, and if you have a more detailed, specific question, um, you can always email Adrienne directly. Um, her email address is on the screen, and as is her direct dial. So thank you all, and we look forward to hearing from you.
Can I just add something real quickly? If you do leave a suggestion in that contact form, could you please just mention this truck study presentation? Thanks, folks. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Thank you. Okay, have a great afternoon, everyone.